Hello and welcome my dear students to my channel Mathematics Made Easy. This is Mr. Chika welcoming all my grade 8 elite math students to today's session. Uh, this is part 3 of the end of term coverage presentation for term 2 coming exam. So it's a must watch video where we are going to be discussing questions on exponential function, questions on uh, recursive and explicit formula. Uh, geometric sequences and statistics. So we are going to talk about the five number summary, the box plot, outliner and all of that. It's going to be a long session. Stay glued with me till the end. Make sure you watch the video till the end so that you can benefit from it. To start part three of the video, I would like to share with you the statistics from my channel. Uh, the analytics of my channel shows that most of you who are watching the videos and most of you who are benefiting from the videos have not yet subscribed to the channel. That is a 79.4% of you. So I would gently request you to please kindly subscribe to the channel so that it serves as a motivation for me to make more content for you. And thank you for all of those of you who have already subscribed to the channel, the 20.6% of my viewers and subscribers. Thank you again and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you found the video useful, do share it with your friends. We are going to give the exam on Monday. So in part 3, the following learning objectives will be assessed. We are going to talk about graphing of exponential functions. We are going to talk about recursive and explicit formulas. We are going to talk about measures of spread, interquartile range. And we are also going to talk about... Uh, the five number summary and the box plot data. So let's solve the first question here. You need to graph the exponential function and you need to find certain points. So first you graph the function for exponential function. Then you find the y-intercept, the domain, the range, the equation of the asymptote. All of that for these following questions. So question 9, 10 and 11 are given here. So for solving each of the questions, the method is going to be same. So uh, first let's find the y-intercept. So remember to find y-intercept, we have to always put x equal to 0 in the given equation. So I'm solving the first question here. So y is equal to 2 to the power 1 by 6x. This is the equation. Now when I put x as 0, 1 by 6 to the power 0. Remember any number to the power 0 is always 1. So this is 2 multiplied with 1 which is 2. So what is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is y equal to 2 this point. So at this point x is 0 and y is 2. So this is going to be one point which lies on the graph. So we are going to use this point. Then we will talk about domain, range, equation of asymptote. Now all these three things are going to come after we finish the graph. Now to do the graph of any function, I hope you remember the method of making table of values. So you are going to make table of values if the calculator is not allowed. That means we are going to take values of x and y. So uh, I think three to four points are good enough. So let's take some points here. So first point I'm taking x is 0 so y already has 2 so we have got the point x comma y as 0 comma 2 this is one point. Next point you can take x as 1 so if x is 1 y is 2 multiplied by 1 by 6 which is 1 by 3 so 1 comma 1 by 3 that's another point. Uh, then you can also take maybe some negative number so I'm going to take the next point as minus 1 so when I do that it is 2 multiplied with uh, 1 by 6 to the power minus 1 that means 2 multiplied with 6 so this point is minus 1 comma 12. So you have got three points this is the first point 0 comma 2 this is the second point 1 comma minus 1 by 3 and this is the third point minus 1 comma 12. Now you are going to plot these points on the graph so 0 comma 2 x is 0 y is 2 means this point next is x is 1 y is 0 0.33 very less that means somewhere here 
then minus 1 x is minus 1 means here and y is 12 means it's very uh, at a height so if you see these are the three points now once you have got the three points you can join the pots uh, points uh, with the free hand so i'm going to change color and do that so join the dots and make the curve so this dot i'm going to connect with this this one with this and if you see you take some negative value it is going to be coming down very 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 close to this axis so this is how the graph is there for y equal to 2 to the power 1 by 6x so now we can say the domain and the range domain remember is comes from the x-axis always so if you see on the x-axis you are taking negative value also positive value also zero also this is negative side of x-axis this is positive side so all values are taken so the domain here in this case will be all the real numbers when i say all real numbers positive negative zero everything now range comes from y y is 2 to the power 1 by 6 x if you look at the y axis there is no part of the graph below the y axis so all y values are positive therefore the range is going to be the set of all values such that y is greater than zero positive y axis only this is up positive this is below negative i hope you remember so the graph is above the x-axis going towards positive y-axis so it is going to be all y positive now equation of asymptote let me remind you what is asymptote asymptote is that axis x or y axis where the graph is very very close so if you see this part of the graph um, the black graph that we have drawn for y equal to 2 multiplied with 1 by 6 to the power x this graph is very very close to the x-axis but it is not touching the x-axis so therefore the equation of asymptote would be the i uh, the x-axis which is given by y equal to 0 and by definition of asymptote the graph is very very near to the x-axis you can observe so it is going to be the equation of asymptote so this is how you solve a question similarly you can solve question 10 11 12 13 and 14 similarly you can solve the question 12 13 and 14 uh, i will do a little bit of question 12 also just to tell you that there is a negative sign here so what difference is going to make so for the y intercept i have told you put x equal to 0 so when you put x equal to 0 y comes as minus 4 10 to the power 0 10 to the power 0 is going to give you 1 so it is going to be y equal to minus 4 so here there is a negative y intercept that is the difference that you are getting however there will be no difference in the domain as you would see uh, for the graph the domain will be all real numbers now um, again to make uh, the graph you need the point so you will make the table of values take different values of x and y so one value we have already taken that is uh, x is 0 so y has come out to be minus 4 another value you can take x as 1 so when you take x as 1 it is minus 40 a very big number if you take x as minus 1 it is going to be minus 4 over n which is going to be minus 2 by 5 so accordingly you can uh, draw the points and join them to get the graph and then your domain range and equation of asymptote will be there so let's check the answers uh, here are the six graphs for question 9 to 14 uh, i have also mentioned here on the right the y intercept the domain the range and the uh, asymptote observe for all the questions the asymptote is x-axis except for the last question where the asymptote is y equal to 3 because the graph is going up so y equal to 3 would be the asymptote i will just show you here so 1 2 3 so if you see this is the line y equal to 3 so the graph is near about touching y equal to 3 but not exactly touching that's why the asymptote is different here in all other questions the domain is same and the domain is uh, negative sorry the range is negative in question number 11 and question number 12 only why there is difference because here you see um, negative sign there is negative 3 to the power 9 x so this negative sign changes the range the range becomes y less than 0 negative similarly here there is negative so y less than 0 
is the range. So that's how you graph the exponential behavior showing intercepts and then behavior. Before we move to the next question, I want to revise for you explicit formula and recursive formula. So I have put the key concept here. This is very important slide. So if you get in your ministry exam, the free response question where you have to write and explain the difference between uh, explicit and recursive formula, then this is your answer. Remember, the main difference is that an explicit formula allows you to find any term nth term of the sequence by using the formula written in terms of n. However, to write a recursive formula, you have to use the previous term or you have to go to the, um, you know, uh, the last term and the common difference and common ratio. So, for example, for a sequence A1, A2, A3, a recursive formula is a formula that requires the computation of all previous terms. So if you are calculating the fifth term, the fourth term will be needed. If you require the fourth term, the third term would be really, uh, needed. So previous term is very important to find the nth term. However, the difference is in explicit. In the sequence A1, A2, A3, AN, a formula is there which can help you to compute the value of AN using the formula itself. So, the formula will be not requiring the previous term. That's the difference. Similarly, in recursive, we can find the value of a term in the sequence using the value of the previous term. I already explained this to you. Whereas, in explicit formula, we can find the value of the term in the sequence using the position using the formula. Again, we also have to know... Um, what is a geometric sequence because we are going to use uh, this concept and also solve some questions. So remember the nth term an of a geometric sequence where the first term is a1 and the common ratio is r is given by the formula. I'm going to write it here again. an equal to a1 r to the power n minus 1 where a1 is the first term, r is the common ratio, n is the number of term which is a positive integer. So let's use this concept for solving question 38, 41 and 40. Okay, so let's solve question 38. This is quite an important question. I feel in your ministry exam this can come, so do it nicely. This is a recursive formula. Remember why it is recursive formula? Because here a4, that is the fourth term is given, then the general term an is given in terms of the previous term. So if an is the nth term, then an minus 1 is the next term. So we are going to use this recursive formula. That means we are going to repeatedly, again and again, use this formula to get to our answer, that is a1. a1 is the first term. So we have to find in this question the first term. And I'm going to use a4 and this formula. So if I apply A4 formula to this equation, that means I put n equal to 4 in this in this formula which is given. Then what do you get? You get A4 is equal to 4 times n minus 1 would become 3, the previous term, plus 16. Right? Now is A4 given to you in the question? Yes, that value is given to be 1104. So I'm going to put that value, subtract 16 from it to get the value of A3. I need the third term now. So to get the third term, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So that 4, 4 khalas and what you get is A3. So from here, A3 when you simplify comes out to be 272. So I have got the third term. Now I'm going to apply this formula, the recursive formula which is given for A3 again. So I put n equal to 3 in first equation. So when I do that, what do I get? A3 is going to be 4 times A2 plus 16. Now do I know the value of A3? Yes, so I'm going to substitute. So 272 is equal to 4 A2 plus 16. So from here, a2 is going to be on simplification this value. So this is A2 equal to 64. Now we have got the second term also. Now we need the last that is the first term. So I'm going to now again apply this formula for n equal to 2. So when I do A2 is going to be 4A1 plus 16. A2 is 64, so subtract 16, divide by 4, and that's what is your A1. So A1 comes out to be 
12 on simplification. So if you see this was a recursive formula and as I told you a recursive formula is used to find the nth term by using the previous term. So this formula we used and we repeatedly applied it. How many times? Three times. Let's highlight and show you so that you don't forget this. So first time I applied here where I wrote the formula for a4 and in terms of a3. Second time I applied here when I applied found the value of a3 in terms of a2 and last time I applied here when I applied a2 equal to 4 times a1 plus 16. So three times repeatedly we apply the recursive formula to get the solution. Very important. Okay, let's come back. So question 41, I've already discussed with you. I'm not going to repeat it. We have discussed the difference between explicit and recursive formula. So make sure you watch the previous slide nicely. And if it comes in your ministry exam, I would suggest you to make a table of difference. Like one side, you write explicit formula, then you write recursive formula and one by one give the points like first point, second point of difference and so on. Use the previous slide. And let's now do question 40. So find a recursive formula. Now here the recursive formula is not given. You have to find it. That means you have to write the formula in which the nth term is written as the previous term. So first we have to find a pattern. The hint is find a pattern. See, these numbers are related how? So the first number is 4. So a1 is 4. The next number is a2 equal to 9. Now think how I can write 9 in terms of the first term 4. So I can write 9 as 4 multiplied by 2 plus 1. Similarly, a3 next term is 19. How can I write 19 in terms of the previous term? Because for recursive you use previous term. So I'm going to use the previous term. So if I take 19, I will use 9 to write it. So 9 multiplied by 2 is 18 plus 1. Similarly, 39 can be written as 19 multiplied with 2 plus 1. So I hope you are able to see the pattern. Every term is written as 2 multiplied with the previous term plus 1. So if I'm going to write the general formula, for nth term of a recursive formula, it is going to be a n is equal to 2 multiplied with the previous term a n minus 1 plus 1. And this formula is valid for all n greater than or equal to 2, where a 1 is value 4. So this is your recursive formula. This is the final answer. Next is question 39 and 42. Uh, these I feel are not that important, but still we'll discuss them. So determine whether the following statement is true or false. One, you have to choose, justify your argument. That means you have to give reason. So the statement is there is only one recursive formula for every sequence. So definitely this statement is false. Why? Because there can be more than one recursive formula. There can be more than one way of writing uh, the recursive formula for a given sequence to find a pattern. I will show you in the next slide an example for it. And for question 42, you have to give a counter example. So when I say counter example means uh, an example which is opposite to the statement. So what is the statement given? Let's see. The statement which is given is uh, in a recursive sequence, if a1 is equal to a2, that means the first two terms are equal, and a2, then a2 is also equal to a3, and so on. This is what you is the statement. You have to give an example which is opposite to the statement. So let's see what is that example in the next slide. That brings us to the end of today's video. Uh, the video was becoming very, very long. In part three, there are still some questions left on the portion of statistics, five number summary, mean, median, mode, outliner, box plot, all of that. So I'm going to make a separate video, which is going to come either by tonight 
or by tomorrow morning so uh, i will close the video here now and if you found the video useful don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel uh, as that serves as motivation for me and also share this with all your friends who are going to give the exam on monday inshallah all of you will do well all the very best bye bye